A high-quality encounter between two top tacticians at the Emirates ended two war, leaving the tie in the balance. Tuchel and Arteta went back and forth tactically, trying to outmaneuver each other. So what exactly were these tactics? Let's take a look beginning with Arsenal in possession. When Arsenal were building in deeper areas, they initially began with a double pivot of Rice and Jorginho, and Bayern responded by defending in a 4-4-2 of their own, with Kane and Muziala looking to use their cover shadow on the double pivot to make progression through the centre extremely difficult. Arsenal looked to drop Odegaard deeper so that they had a 3 versus 2 in this region. However, Bayern's 4-4-2 was not so traditional. Instead of just naturally keeping Kane and Muziala on the pivots they had been picking up, it was Sane who did not operate out wide as a traditional winger would in the defensive phase. And instead, he tucked in quite narrow using his cover shadow on Rice. And this was for one specific reason. Kivio is not a threat on the ball. So Bayern were more than happy to allow him to pick up the ball in this region, knowing he was unlikely to produce a penetrating pass or run into the Bayern Munich half. This is a big reason why Zinchenko came on, but we'll touch on that later. So Arsenal responded to this by adapting their own shape. Kivio could be high, but he tended to stay deep, forming more of a three, whereas White was much more aggressive, as you can see in the difference in their average positions. What this gave Arsenal the opportunity to do, especially on the rarer occasions when Sane was drawn by Kivio, was drop both Rice and Odegaard wide outside the front two of Bayern Munich. This would make it extremely difficult for the front two to press effectively, because their priority was preventing the ball into the midfield. So when the ball went to one of the wider pivots, they could not stagger their press in this manner to prevent the lateral ball. And instead, they shuffled across, meaning that Arsenal could then easily work the ball across to the opposite pivot, who would have time and space to move up the pitch. But Arsenal's use of the right-hand side to create danger was extremely interesting and was dictated by Alfonso Davis being quite man-oriented on Saka. So Odegaard could be in this deeper region or down to the right and Saka would respond. As if Odegaard was simply deeper, Saka would drop into almost a right-back position, allowing White beyond him, knowing that Davis would track him extremely tight. Alternatively, with Odegaard deep, Saka was more than happy to come in field. Either way, what this meant is that Nabry and White were one versus one. And White is quick and would look to take advantage of any hesitation from Nabry to make the run in behind to receive the ball over the top. And this almost led to a goal for Arsenal. When Arsenal were in more controlled possession, their midfield looked like this and we did see them look to try and cause overloads on that left-hand side as they potentially had a 3 versus 2 that could see Martinelli try and drag Kimmich out of position and Rice make the run into the half space. Goreska for Bayern was crucial, using his engine to cover across, so this was never a real threat. What was a massive threat, however, was Bayern Munich on the transition, and this is because their lopsided 4-4-2 meant that Kane, Sane and Muziala were perfectly positioned to break. Particularly when Jorginho was the single pivot, the Bavarians wreaked havoc, as Kane would use his excellent playmaking ability to drop deep and receive the first pass, and Muziala and Sane could look to run in behind, although Muziala could be an excellent shorter passing option, and Bayern got into plenty of threatening positions in this manner. But the second half introduction of Zinchenko changed the dynamic completely. Before, when Kivio was the left back, Bayern Munich could afford to leave him in acres of space, but this was different with Zinchenko, as even if he received in this deep left-hand side position, he's one of the best progressive passers on the side, so he could potentially find a penetrative pass if he was under no pressure. But that was not his main role. Instead, with Kane and Muziala looking to almost be midfielders defensively, Zinchenko could become somewhat of a solo pivot in this deeper region, allowing Jorginho Rice and Odegaard to all stay goal side of the Bayern Munich front too, helping to create that overload. 
If he did need support, it was once again Jorginho inverting alongside him. But what we now saw is that Sane often had a decision to make on whether to spring and press Zinchenko, which he did not do for Kivior, or stay deep. This caused huge problems, particularly once Trossard and Jesus came on. If Sane was to press, it was no longer just a left back receiving in a harmless position, and instead the likes of Havertz could drop into this region and were much more likely to drive up the pitch to get Arsenal into more dangerous zones. But as discussed, if Bayern were passive, this was even worse, as particularly with Jesus on, he had a lot of success as Havertz and Odegaard would look to split wide, dragging Lima and Goretzka across, creating space for Jesus to be found. And we saw just how dangerous the Brazilian was when he came on. And to try and deal with Bayern's transitional ability, Arteta reverted to the 3-2-5 as White was much less aggressive once these changes occurred, in order to give that front five complete attacking freedom, which we saw in that second half. Bayern's threat primarily came from the transitions, but what did they look to do on the ball, and what was Arsenal's genius pressing strategy? When Bayern were on the ball, Arsenal were poised to press in a 4-4-2 and Lima would often drop in as the deepest pivot. However, rather than being a flat 4-4-2 like this, Havertz tended to be much higher than Odegaard, who would initially be using his cover shadow on Lima, whilst Rice would be positioned between the remaining pivots, ready to back up Odegaard. And this is where Arteta's trap started. Havertz's position deterred Neuer from immediately playing to De Ligt and the obvious outball would be Dyer. And this is exactly what Arsenal wanted. As Dyer was not only on his weak foot, he's naturally not as good on the ball as De Ligt. So as soon as the ball began to travel to Dyer, Odegaard would press immediately, backed up by Rice who would cover Lima, as well as Saka on Davis. This would lead to either risky passes and we saw Arsenal get in on goal in this manner. But more often, Dyer would panic more and more as the match went on, and on his left foot, we saw plenty of long balls go straight out of play. Bayern had to adapt, and in fact, the lead up to the second goal is the best example of this as Neuer was finding almost any way not to play out to Dyer, flicking the ball over Havertz, and this eventually led to the goal. And in the second half, realizing they couldn't depend on Dyer, we saw Bayern have to take slightly more risks in the build-up, and this was in the shape of Lima forcing himself to be available. And he would only have the one touch pass to play out to De Ligt, meaning they had played around Havertz and now De Ligt was on his strong foot in the build-up play. Bayern were desperate to get the ball to De Ligt for a few reasons, the first of which being his much improved builder play. But perhaps the most important reason was that one of their go-to plays was to isolate Sane against Kivio at almost every opportunity, whether they were deep or high up the pitch, as they fancied the German's ability against a left back. And this was a good bet, as on a few occasions he got away from his man, leading to extremely dangerous situations, although occasionally the final pass was lacking. This intriguing battle leaves the tie in the balance, but who do you see going through? For the manager tactical score, I thought both performed admirably, but I would give the slight edge to Arteta, meaning he earns a 7.5 and Tuchel a 6.5. Ahead of the second leg, check out this video into how Arteta's tactics have been so effective this season.